Aloha everyone, Michelle Melendez of Blossom Inner Wellness and this is an apology um, video as well as an informative video of what's happening in Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii, first I want to apologize because I because we were putting out testimony to the Hawaii Agriculture Department and I was telling people that it was a, a GMO mosquito that the Hawaii Agricultural Department wants to put out and that was a mistake on my part. There are GMO mosquitoes but they're on the mainland um, this is a mosquito that is injected with a <clears throat> Wabashia bacterium. So it's a new bacterium, uh, source of bacterium that they inject into the male mosquitoes that then sterilizes uh, the sperm basically. So when the female and the male get together, the eggs are not fertilized. So this may sound like a really great idea, but there are no long-term studies on the environment or on people. And I'm gonna show uh, studies uh, that show the dangers of this, as well as I'm gonna show you a live um, video from the Hawaii Agricultural Department of these people who are very kind, huge, huge hearts. They want to save our native birds. That's what they're, uh, that's what the argument is, is they want to save these native birds that are dying off from these mosquitoes. And I totally just honor their, their huge hearts in wanting to do that. But this is not the way. This is the makings of a horror sci-fi film. And we're going to be living through it if these mosquitoes could be living. We could be living through this. Uh, we could be living an actual horror sci-fi film because mosquitoes are the only insect that can really carry diseases that can kill people. In my personal opinion, it, I don't think it could be easily stopped. I think we would be really in for um, a load of hurt. And the possibility of this going wrong is a lot higher than, than these people who are very kind, very good hearted people wanting to save local native birds. I, I think that they're being so nonchalant about the dangers, the possible dangers of this, um, that they're really not seeing the forest for the trees. And so anyway, let me, sh I'm going to share my screen. So I want to show you two studies. Uh, start broadcast, three, two, one. Okay, here we go. This first one is about um, three beetles, three beetles. So these, these beetles were triple injected with uh, wal Walbachia, and this is a different strain of Walbachia. The mosquitoes are injected with a bacterium, and this is an indo -Sci -Sci -Beyond. So I'm probably screwing up that name as well. But still, it, it's, a, it's infected, it's, it's injected with uh, a certain strain of Walbachia. Three beetles. The first one is W. Brucon, the second one is W. Bruori, and the third one is W. Bruos. Um, the first two, W. Bruori or W. Brucon, when they stopped, when they wanted to eliminate these beetles that were injected with this Walbachia, they could do so really easily with the first two. W. Brucon and W. Bruorio were easily eliminated with an antibiotic treatment, but the W. Bruos persisted over five treated generations and could not be eliminated. It could not be eliminated. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you because one of the Hawaii agriculture people says, oh, it'll be really easy to stop this. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let me take you to the second the second one I want to show you, and this is from uh, University of Kentucky Department of Endo, Ma, Endo, Endo Monology, and it's um, an Austec, Aus, Austec, and so that's the name of the the business that submitted this. And Austec submits comments to strongly convey the, that prior to approval of the uncontained release to the environment of substantial numbers of modified mosquitoes carrying the strain of Walbachia. And this is a different, this is a different strain of Walbachia, Pepitinus. The EPA must conduct an, a, a sufficiently rigorous assessment of the potential adverse impacts to human health and the environment that such uncontained release of modified mosquitoes may entail. So um, I'm gonna stop that just for a second. Come back to you guys. So those are just only two studies that say, first off, there's a problem here. We have a Walbachia 
bacterium or not bacterium. The first one was a different strain of Wabashia in three beetles. Two were easily eliminated, but one couldn't be eliminated. That's a problem. When you put something out, an invasive species, which Hawaii knows a lot about, what happens with invasive species? The cokies, you know, we got cokies all over the place on the big, on the big island here. Uh, mongoose, they thought that was a good idea. Uh, we have a gecko here that's not native, as well as, um, uh, as, well as native plants that um, have taken over. So that is that, that right there is, a, is an issue. Um, the other issue is the fact that they, they, where are the human studies? These, yes, males don't bite, but females do. And if that female gets out, what, where are the studies that show if the female gets out and bites humans with a bacterium that sterilizes eggs, what happens to the human being? Where are those studies? Like, I love these people. They have really good hearts, but how dare they? put us at risk without any studies of showing if the female gets out, which the probability is really low. And I'm gonna show you where they say this and the probability is really low, but if they get out and the female gets out, then here are the human studies that show if she, in, if she bites people, these are the five, 10, 15 year studies that show no harm is gonna to be to humans. I wanna see those studies. So you guys ready to, to see the, um, the actual video? Uh, of the Hawaii uh, Agriculture Department and what they say about this, because this really blows my mind. Uh, I'm going to start my broadcast here and get over here to my Facebook and go here. And all right, coming down, showing the the uh, Maui County Council um, live. OK, this um, hold on a second, Jonathan, I want to get back to your four. It's forty four. Oh, forty four. Oh, four. And I'm going to just let him play, speak a little bit. And then I'm going to comment a little bit uh, because he's like so nonchalant. It freaking <clears throat> trying not to get angry because I see these people and their hearts are so in the right place. But my God, my God, a, a, a mosquito that sterilizes their own eggs and the possibility of this getting out. Where are the human studies to keep us safe? Here is what he says. The mosquitoes that are released and only released males. Um, so males don't bite, females bite. So they're not males, mosquitoes are not going to bite birds, male mosquitoes are not going to bite humans. You can say like, okay, how reliable is um, the sex separation? There is data from one of our partners on that, um, because they use a combination of physical sorting the larvae, females and male mosquitoes are different sizes. And then they actually use artificial intelligence technology to sort of um, try to double check that you yeah. got your gender. Double there is check. a risk, but they're estimating at this point that it is the one in hundreds of millions. That's enough for me. Possibly releasing one. So then you get into like, okay, could you accidentally so release So he said females? one in hundreds of millions of level of a chance that one female could be released. And for me, I just, I said over him and I apologize for that. That's enough for me. That's what I said. And you probably couldn't hear what he said, but I'm going to let him speak a little bit more because this next part just, here he goes know with the different Wolbachia and then you start a new population that one female mosquito would have to find one of the um, trans infected male mosquitoes and successfully reproduce and outcompete all the other mosquitoes so there is a risk but it's a very very small risk <laughs> okay you guys very very small risk but he says the female mosquito would have to find a, a male mosquito they get released at the same time so if she accidentally gets in that bath she's got him right there so anyway, there's um, there's another one I want to show you that's right here. Uh, let me, I'm looking at my notes right now. Um, Potentially human disease bearing population to thrive. So we're targeting mm -hmm. a certain type of mosquito, are we maybe allowing another type of mosquito to flourish? So um, maybe that's part of like that question of unintended consequences. Sure, I'm happy to jump into that briefly before um, Hannah and Jin take any on it. Um, so just two things to keep in mind, I guess, in relationship to that question is, our initial releases are gonna be in these very remote mountainous areas where other than field biologists, people are not going. So even if there was an unexpected ecological interaction where the reduction in the Culex population resulted in another mosquito population increasing, um, they're not actually in a place where humans are getting bitten. 
See, he, he, he's saying this, they're not actually in a place where humans are getting bitten. That doesn't say they're not in a place that humans are getting bitten. That doesn't say the mosquito can't fly, you know, where humans are getting bitten or where there's a person. And so it's like, I'm just floored. I'm just so floored that these people think this is okay. You know, anyway, there's one more I want to show you, then I'm going to come back to you live and, and complete this. Um, and this is Hannah um, uh, Mounts. And it's 47.29, so just a little bit more, right? Let's just start there. Um, no, I think that was great. The, I mean, the only thing I guess I wanted to just add emphasis to was, you know, at the end of what Jonathan was saying is there, there are a lot of, you know, oh, could there potentially be some negative effect that nobody has thought about? But I mean, these are be this, these decisions are being based on the best science that's available and like so heavily vetted. Um, and the best minds in Hawaii and outside of Hawaii looking at looking at this, that it is a very, very small possibility. But what is a very real possibility is the negative effects if we don't do it, which Jonathan did end with. And I mean, we're looking at potentially 100 kiwi Q left on the mountain, potentially 30 to 40 um, a kiki ki left in the wild. And this is them disappearing in the next two years is a very, very real consequence of not doing anything. So I want to pause that for one second, um, because there's something else that she says, where is my zoom? Um, stop sharing. Uh, and I, and I'm going to actually pause the recording for a minute because I want to go back to something that she says. So, well, because let me go back. There we go. Yeah. And, and I think just to add, add to that too, you know, well, because the technology doesn't exist, you know, we are trying to do something that isn't a permanent fix. If these were genetically engineered mosquitoes, we could be driving Kulex mosquitoes, you know, down to extinction, you know, Maui wide. We don't have the ability to do that. So if we stop releasing, if we do, you know, move forward and release these Wolbachia mosquitoes and the mosquito population is suppressed, the moment we stop releasing them, the, that effect will go away. So this is not something that is because it is not a gene manipulation. It is not passed down, um, you know, because there are no offspring <laughs> from the ones that are mating. Um, it's not something that's going to be out in that mosquito um, population if we stop. Um, at the same time, that's a little daunting because it means if we have to do it every two weeks, we've got to do it every two weeks forever. Um, but it also gives you know a way out if there were any unintended consequences of this technique that as soon as you stop, it all goes away. Here's the thing with these people I love, they have a heart and they want to save these birds. But the other thing that Hannah says is that this is not a permanent fix. Releasing these male mosquitoes is not a permanent fix. Where's the eyeballs? There it is. Uh, people getting, need to re keep releasing them every two weeks. And then she says, that's why this can stop because they can just stop releasing them. But just like if that female gets out and starts breeding, you know, the, a new population and they stop the male mosquitoes, that doesn't mean the mosquitoes are going to stop. How do we know they're not like that third beetle? that is totally cannot be, cannot be eliminated. Just, you know, so the probability of something going wrong, I think is way more higher than what Jonathan is talking about. I want to see the studies. I want to see a study of if humans get bitten by a female mosquito that accidentally gets out from the millions and millions that they're going to be releasing, what happens to that human being? And I want to see a study that is a five or 10 year st long study. What happens to the environment? What if these, a female gets out and starts biting the birds, other birds, this is a female, you know, possibility of her getting out. Cause you know, I don't know if you've ever watched a sci-fi movie, but at what you, what you always think cannot happen happens, you know, Murphy's law, if something can, you know, I, I can't remember what Murphy's law is, but you guys get the point. So anyway, much aloha to you guys. Stay strong. Let's send them our testimony. Please share this video. Um, and send in your testimony. I'll send the link. I'll put the link at the bottom, uh, probably on this video. Much mahalo. I love you all. Let's stand strong. Hawaii freedom, Hawaii freedom actions. Uh, much, much love.